Welcome back to Bible Shorts, Episode 93, Esther, Part 2. In last week's episode, we learned how a young woman named Esther became the queen of the Persian king, but on the advice of her cousin Mordecai, kept the fact that she was Jewish hidden. Mordecai, a minor official at the king's gate, incurred the wrath of a powerful man, Haman, because he would not bow down to him. Haman persuaded the king to pass a law permitting all the Jewish people in the empire of the Medes and Persians to be destroyed. Mordecai wants Esther to plead for help from the king. But Esther reminds Mordecai, all the king's servants and the people in his provinces know that for a man or woman who approaches the king in the inner court without being summoned, there is one penalty, death, unless by pointing his golden scepter towards him, the king grants his life. Mordecai answered, saying, Do not suppose that you will escape. No, if you persist in remaining silent at such a time, relief and deliverance will come from another place. But you and the house of your father will perish. Who knows? Perhaps you have come to the throne for just such a time as this. Esther sent back her message to Mordecai. Go, gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my attendants will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Then, on the third day, she dressed herself in her full splendor and stood in the inner court of the palace in front of the king's hall. The king was sitting on his royal throne in the hall, facing the entrance, and when he saw Queen Esther standing in the court, he was pleased with her and held out to her the gold scepter that was in his hand. He said, what is the matter, Queen Esther? Tell me what you desire. Even if it is half of my kingdom, I grant it to you. Esther replied, Would the king be pleased to come with Haman today to the banquet I have prepared? So the king and Haman came to the banquet that Esther had prepared. As they drank their wine, the king again said to Esther, Tell me what you request. I grant it to you. Tell me what you desire. Even if it is half my kingdom, it is yours for the asking. Esther replied, If I have found favor in the king's eyes, and if it is his pleasure to grant what I ask and agree to my request, let the king and Haman come to the other banquet I intend to give tomorrow. Haman left full of joy and high spirits. But when he saw Mordecai the next morning, neither standing up nor stirring at his approach, he felt a gust of anger. And when he returned home, he complained to his neighbors and his wife. And they suggested, build a gallows. And in the morning, asked the king to have Mordecai hanged on it. Delighted with this advice, Mordecai had the gallows erected. That night, the king couldn't sleep. So he asked for the record book, the Chronicles, to be brought and read to him. They read to the king the account of how Mordecai had saved the king's life. The next morning, the king sent to Haman and asked, What should I do to the man whom I want to honor and exalt? Haman thought the king was referring to him and imagined how he would like to be honored. The man should wear your royal robes and crown and be put on the king's horse, he proudly replied. Then the most important man in the king's palace should lead him through the city square, proclaiming him as honored before the people. 
Go and do all this for Mordecai, the king ordered. So Haman had to dress Mordecai in the king's clothes and publicly proclaim him specially honored by the king. So then the king and Haman went to Queen Esther's banquet. And as they were drinking wine on the second day, the king again asked, Queen Esther, what is your petition? It will be given you. What is your request? Even up to half the kingdom, it will be granted. Queen Esther answered, If I have found favor with you, your majesty, and if it pleases you, grant me my life. This is my petition, and spare my people. This is my request, for I and my people have been sold to be destroyed, killed, and annihilated. The king demanded, Who would dare to do such a thing to the queen? He asked Queen Esther, Who is he? Where is he? The man who has dared to do such a thing. Esther said, An adversary, an enemy, this vile Haman. The king was furious. And so it was that Haman was hung from the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then the king wrote a new royal order to allow the Jewish people to defend themselves against anyone who tried to attack them based on Haman's original order. Then Mordecai went out from the presence of the king, wearing royal robes of blue and white with a great golden crown and a mantle of fine linen and purple, while the city of Susa shouted and rejoiced. For the Jews there was light and gladness, joy and honor. The end of the book of Esther explains that Mordecai recorded these events and sent letters to all the Jews throughout the provinces of the king near and far to have them celebrate annually in the month of Adar, the time when the Jews got relief from their enemies and as the month when their sorrow was turned into joy and their mourning into a day of celebration, which is Purim. Pur, from the word that means lot, Remember that uh, Haman had thrown in order to pick the day that the Jewish people were supposed to be destroyed. And it's one of the most fun celebrations of the Jewish year. People have masquerades, there's noisemakers, feasts, and plenty of wine. Kids dress up in costumes to commemorate Queen Esther hiding her Jewish identity. And for those who go to synagogue that day, the story is read out loud. And whenever Haman's name is said, which occurs 54 times, the whole congregation engages in noisemaking to blot out his name, booing, hissing, stamping their feet, and shaking noisemakers. Now, the original book of Esther, written in Hebrew, doesn't mention the name of God. Now, a different version written in Greek added six more chapters, more details, and including prayers to God said by Esther and Mordecai. But the original Hebrew version does create a sense of wonder. It makes you think. Remember when Esther first balks at going to the king, Mordecai tells her, maybe it's for this reason that you have become queen. You aren't given direct answers. You have to think. You have to think about, oh, how does God use us to do his will? What's next? Look for episode 94, Advent week one, the season of hope.